Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. What can be one of the scariest thing for the believer is to lose the sweetness of Iman. As a Prophet ﷺ said that that's one of the signs of the believer is that he hates to return back to disbelief. Meaning, especially for the one who's tasted the sweetness of Iman that was once a non- Muslim, and then they embraced Islam. So one of the signs of their faith is that they hate to go back to disbelief, to go back to kufr. And that should be in the back of all of our minds, or maybe in the front of all of our minds, we should be reminded of the danger of allowing shubahat or shahwat to overtake us. Shubahat meaning the doubtful things, getting into doubtful issues, debating and arguing about the religion, about things we have no knowledge about, or debating and arguing to prove ourselves, or to support our group or our sect, our medhab, our sheikh, whatever. And those kind of things, that shubahat... Is, can lead to zandaka, it can lead to heresy and leaving the religion or researching things, knowledge that has no benefit. That's why the Prophet ﷺ made dua for al nafia, for beneficial knowledge, and to be protected from knowledge that has no benefit. For example, knowledge of witchcraft, knowledge of Satanism knowledge of anything that has no Islamic benefit or no benefit even in your worldly life or worldly status that it has no benefit in studying those issues then it's best to leave that especially that which only causes harm that's that's knowledge that has no benefit and that can lead you again to shubahat, to having doubts yourself about your religion and your faith. Getting into the arguments of the atheists, if you don't have the knowledge and the tools, and knowledge is the tools, to combat shubahat. So if you don't have the knowledge, then you shouldn't be going into their books, going into the books of the disbelievers and so forth. All of those are ways to lead to shubahat, and that shubahat can grow to such an extent where you begin to doubt Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala wa iyadhan billah min dhalika may Allah protect us from that protect us from shubahat and bless us with firmness on his deen ameen ya rabbil alameen the other type of harmful or the other type of harm which endangers your faith and that the Muslims should be weary of, cognizant of, and avoid. And that's shahwat, meaning our desires, our vain desires that we're inclined towards. We're not talking about having halal relations or something that, those permissible things, but we're talking about going beyond the bounds to those things which are impermissible. For example, listening to the Muharram. You know, listening to those things which are haram. Or looking at those things which are haram. Or eating those things which are haram. Or earning those things which are haram. All of those are ways, and Islam protects us, and all of those spears protects us mentally, physically, and spiritually, financially, in our deen and our dunya, from all harm. But if we don't pay attention to the bounds, avoid the shubahat and the, our vain desires, then we transgress those bounds and it can lead us astray. And this can be to such an extent that 
a person, not only does it affect your iman, your level of faith, by doing sins, and that our sins fluctuate, our iman fluctuates, it affects your iman, but it can cause your iman to go to such a level to where you disbelieve. And this is why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Al-ma'asi barid al-kufr. That sinfulness is the means to disbelief. Sinfulness is the means to disbelief. The more you sin, the more opportunity the shaitan has to to play with you so much so to perhaps where you might even begin to believe that your sin is okay. And how does that happen? It doesn't happen immediately. But for example, the person who commits uh, fornication regularly, they, their heart begins, begins to be, become softer to that and accept it. Accepts the fact that it fornicates and accepts that wickedness. Because they're doing it all the time to where it begin, becomes, so it's not such a big deal. And it's definitely not a big deal to do the things that lead up to it. So all of those other sins become easy to commit and easy when you do commit it. And just continue on until perhaps a person begins to believe that what they're doing is, is really not wrong after all. Because you're not harming anyone else. Especially if you're a person who's not married and you're doing this zina, or doing whatever you do, you can begin to think that, hey, I'm not hurting anyone. I'm just enjoying myself temporarily, and I know it's wrong, but it really doesn't seem that bad. Meaning the more that you do it, your heart becomes hard, begins to be covered with the black spot, as the Prophet wasallam said. And as Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said, رَانَ عَلَى قَلُوبِهِمْ بِمَا كَانَ يَقْسِبُونَ that they get a covering on their heart for what they used to do. So that begins to cover your heart, the stain of sin, to where not only is it weakening your iman, but it's leading you to disbelief. The more we involve ourselves in those things, so we have to fear the sin, and we have to fear the shubahat, the, the doubtful things, and do our best to preserve our iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with taqwa Allah azza wa jal, and bless us with amna fi rizqan tayyiba, wa amna mutaqabbilin. And all of those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.